In a small town in Victoria, Australia, a shocking case of murder has come to light. Rebecca Payne, a 43-year-old woman, has been convicted of fatally poisoning her husband Noel with sleeping pills laced in his lemon cookies. The incident took place in 2020, and the verdict was handed down this month. The case has shocked the community and brought renewed attention to domestic violence in Australia. Rebecca Payne testified in court that her husband was abusive towards her, and neighbors alleged that there was violence in their relationship. This tragedy highlights the importance of recognizing and addressing domestic violence before it leads to such heinous crimes. Prosecutors allege that Rebecca poisoned her husband because she wanted out of the marriage. However, she testified that she didn't think the sleeping pills would kill him. She just wanted him to go to bed and sleep off his anger. Unfortunately, Noel never woke up. When Rebecca found him with no pulse, she panicked and did not call for help. Instead, she wrapped him in a blanket, taped it up with duct tape, and shoved it in a chest freezer, which she later moved into a neighbor's yard. The body was found within days of Noel's death. What makes this case all the more bizarre is that prosecutors revealed that Noel had another live-in sexual partner whom he was also violent toward, and that woman had sustained a brain injury at some point. It is unclear what role this information played in the trial but it adds yet another layer of complexity to the story. The case of Rebecca Payne is a tragic reminder of the devastating effects of domestic violence. It is important to create awareness around this issue and take action to prevent such incidents from occurring. Domestic violence can have long-lasting physical and emotional effects on victims, and it is crucial to provide them with the support they need to leave abusive relationships. Unfortunately, cases like these are not uncommon. According to a report by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, one in three women in Australia experience physical violence or sexual assault at some point in their lives. This is a disturbing statistic that highlights the urgent need for action. Rebecca Payne's case has also shed light on the issue of spousal abuse and its effects on mental health. Victims of domestic violence are more likely to suffer from depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues. It is crucial to provide them with access to quality mental health care services to help them heal from the trauma they have experienced. The case has also raised questions about the criminal justice system in Australia. Many people are concerned that Rebecca Payne's sentence may not be severe enough given the severity of her crime. Others have criticized the media coverage of the case arguing that it has been sensationalized and focused too much on the perpetrator rather than the victim. Regardless of what happens next, the case of Rebecca Payne has sparked an important conversation about domestic violence and the need for action. It is our responsibility, as a society, to create awareness around this issue and provide support to victims. We must work together to ensure that tragedies like this never happen again. The animal kingdom is full of amazing creatures that never cease to astound us with their unique characteristics and behaviors. From the majestic elephants to the tiny hummingbirds, every animal has its own story to tell. However, there is one particular animal that never fails to capture our hearts with its cuteness and playful nature the otter. Otters are aquatic mammals that belong to the family Mustelidae, which also includes weasels, badgers, and ferrets. They are found in both freshwater and marine environments, and their natural habitats range from rivers, lakes, and ponds to coastal regions and estuaries. Otters are known for their streamlined bodies, webbed feet, and thick fur coats that keep them warm in cold water. One of the most amazing things about otters is their ability to use tools. Unlike other animals that rely on instincts and brute force to obtain food, Otters have been observed using rocks to crack open shellfish and clams. They hold the rock between their forepaws and strike the shell against it until it breaks open, revealing the tasty morsel inside. This behavior is not innate but learned, passed down from generation to generation through observation and practice. Another remarkable aspect of otters is their social behavior. 
These adorable creatures are highly sociable and often form close-knit family groups or rafts. A typical raft consists of several individuals, ranging from 2 to 20 or more, and may include both males and females. Otters communicate with each other using a variety of vocalizations, including chirps, whistles, and growls. They also engage in play, chasing each other around and sliding down muddy banks or snow-covered slopes, seemingly just for fun. Otters are also known for their love of water. They spend most of their time in the water, swimming gracefully and diving to depths of up to 60 feet in search of food. Their streamlined bodies allow them to move through the water with ease, while their webbed feet act like paddles, propelling them forward. Otters have also been observed holding hands while they sleep, forming a floating raft of cuteness. One species of otter that is particularly fascinating is the sea otter. These furry creatures are found along the northern and eastern coasts of the Pacific Ocean, from Alaska to California. Sea otters are the only species of marine mammal that do not have a layer of blubber to keep them warm in cold water. Instead, they rely on their thick fur coats, which consist of up to one million hairs per square inch, to trap air bubbles and provide insulation. Sea otters are also known for their affinity for shellfish, especially clams, crabs, and sea urchins. They use rocks to crack open their prey, just like their freshwater cousins. Unfortunately, sea otters are also one of the most endangered marine mammals in the world. Hunting, pollution, and habitat loss have all contributed to their decline. However, conservation efforts have helped to increase their numbers in recent years. In fact, the sea otter population in California has grown from just 50 individuals in the 1930s to over 3,000 today. In conclusion, otters are truly amazing animals that never fail to capture our hearts with their cuteness and playful nature. From their ability to use tools to their love of water, these creatures have many unique characteristics that make them stand out from other animals. Whether you're watching them play in the water or witnessing them crack open a clam with a rock, otters are sure to leave you feeling amazed and inspired. So next time you see an otter, take a moment to appreciate all the amazing things that make them such special creatures. The idea of humans colonizing other planets has long fascinated scientists and the public alike. But one major obstacle to this dream has been the cost and complexity of building structures in space using materials from Earth. However, a team of researchers at the University of Manchester may have found a solution, building materials made from potato starch. According to the team's lead researcher, Dr. Aled Roberts, it made sense to use starch as a binding agent since astronauts will already be producing it as food. By mixing simulated Martian or lunar soil with potato starch and a pinch of salt, or even astronauts' tears, the researchers created a material that is twice as strong as concrete and doesn't require extreme heat or heavy processing equipment. This breakthrough could significantly reduce the cost and complexity of building structures on Mars or the Moon. The new material, dubbed Starcrete, has a strength of 72 MPa, MPA, when mixed with simulated Martian soil and 91 MPa when mixed with simulated moon dust. In comparison, traditional concrete has a strength of 32 MPa. What's more, the process of making starcrete requires only normal home baking temperatures, meaning that astronauts can produce almost half a ton of the material using just 55 pounds of potatoes and a little salt or magnesium chloride obtained from the Martian surface. The potential applications of this new material are immense. For example, it could be used to build shelters, landing pads, or even entire habitats on other planets. And since the material can also be used as a greener alternative to traditional concrete on Earth, it has practical uses closer to home as well. The team has launched a crowdfunding campaign to assist with continuing development of the material through the startup Deacon Bio. It's clear that this research has the potential to revolutionize space exploration and pave the way for human colonization of other planets. But why stop at potatoes? 
As we continue to explore space, we may discover new materials that can be used to build structures in extreme environments. And who knows, perhaps one day we'll find ourselves living in houses made from materials we never thought possible. The possibilities are endless. However, there are still several challenges that must be overcome before humans can colonize other planets. These include issues such as radiation exposure, isolation, and the psychological effects of living in a confined space for extended periods of time. But every breakthrough in materials science brings us one step closer to achieving our dreams of becoming an interplanetary species. In conclusion, the development of Starcrete is a significant breakthrough in the field of space exploration. By using simple ingredients readily available to astronauts, we may be able to significantly reduce the cost and complexity of building structures on other planets. And who knows, perhaps one day we'll look back on this discovery as the moment when humans truly began to explore the final frontier. The world's first fully solar-powered plane has completed its historic journey around the world. The Solar Impulse 2 plane landed in Abu Dhabi on July 26 after flying for more than 23 days across four continents and over 42,000 kilometers. The Solar Impulse 2 set off from Abu Dhabi in March 2015 with the goal of promoting clean energy and sustainable transportation. The plane was designed and built by Swiss pioneers Bertrand Picard and André Borschberg, who piloted it in turns throughout the journey. The wingspan of the plane is larger than that of a Boeing 747, but it weighs only 2.3 tons, or about the weight of a family car. The plane has 17,248 photovoltaic cells that power four electric motors, allowing it to fly during the day and store excess energy in batteries to fly at night. However, the journey was not without its difficulties. Due to a lack of ventilation, the plane's batteries overheated during the flight from China to Hawaii, causing damage that required several months of repairs. Despite this setback, the Solar Impulse 2 carried on with its mission and returned to the skies. The pilots encountered numerous difficulties along the way, including turbulence, severe weather, and fatigue. The pilots had to take turns sleeping for 20 minutes at a time in a specially designed cockpit that also served as their living quarters during the long flights, which could last up to five days. Muscat, Oman, Ahmedabad, India, Mandalay, Myanmar, Chongqing and Nanjing, China, Phoenix, Arizona, and Sevilla, Spain were among the cities visited by the Solar Impulse 2. The plane was met by enthusiastic crowds and local officials who praised the pilot's pioneering spirit and commitment to sustainability at each stop. One of the Solar Impulse 2 pilots, Bertrand Picard, stated that the journey was not only about demonstrating the potential of clean energy, but also about inspiring people to think differently about the future of transportation. If we can fly around the world without fuel, imagine what we can do on the ground, he said. The Solar Impulse 2 has already had an impact on the aviation industry, causing airlines and manufacturers to invest in more efficient technologies and cleaner fuels. It has also inspired a new generation of environmentalists and innovators working to make the world a more sustainable place. Finally, the Solar Impulse 2 journey represents a significant milestone in the history of aviation and renewable energy. It demonstrates that with perseverance, creative thinking, and a commitment to sustainability, we can accomplish great things and pave the way for a brighter future. The future is clean, it's just a question of mindset, Bertrand Picard said. In recent years, the Fox News Network has come under fire, particularly for its coverage of the 2020 U.S. presidential election. Abby Grossberg, a network producer, has filed a lawsuit against her own company, alleging that executives pressured her to accept responsibility for airing false election fraud claims in order to protect higher-ups and hosts, including Tucker Carlson. Before joining Tucker Carlson tonight, Grossberg worked with Maria Bartiromo. 
she claims that due to sexist behavior at the company, Bartiromo's show was understaffed, making it difficult to fact-check claims of election tampering by Dominion voting systems. However, during her September deposition as part of Dominion's defamation lawsuit, Fox's lawyers allegedly coerced and intimidated Grossberg into shifting blame away from male executives and hosts, putting herself and Bartiromo in danger. Grossberg describes Fox News as having a toxic culture in which women are not respected or valued. She claims that executives use derogatory language to describe female employees, including referring to Bartiromo as a crazy bee, menopausal, hysterical, and diva. She also claims anti-Semitic jokes, slurs against women, and open harassment occurred on Tucker Carlson tonight. Grossberg claims that when she complained about harassment by two male producers, she was told she wasn't doing her job. These allegations paint a bleak picture of Fox News' work environment. They claim the network has struggled to address gender discrimination and sexual harassment within its ranks. It also calls into question the veracity of their reporting on major issues such as the U.S. presidential election. Fox News has denied the allegations and placed Grossberg on unpaid leave. In addition, the company has filed its own lawsuit against her in an attempt to prevent her from discussing conversations with the network's lawyers. They claim that her allegations are without merit and that when she raised them, they immediately investigated. This is not, however, the first time Fox News has been accused of bias and inaccurate reporting. The network has been chastised in recent years for promoting right-wing conspiracy theories and downplaying the severity of the COVID-19 pandemic. Concerns have also been raised about Fox News's influence on American politics, particularly how it shapes public opinion and influences elections. Grossberg's allegations highlight the importance of creating more equitable workplaces across all industries. They emphasize the importance of companies confronting gender discrimination and sexual harassment head-on, rather than sweeping it under the rug. Furthermore, they emphasize the importance of journalistic integrity and the need to accurately and truthfully report the news. What happens next in this case remains to be seen. However, one thing is certain, Grossberg's allegations raise serious concerns about Fox News culture and the accuracy of its reporting. Finally, it is the network's responsibility to address these concerns and ensure that their workplace is a safe and respectful environment for all employees. To summarize, Grossberg's allegations are a wake-up call for Fox News and the wider media industry. They remind us of the importance of treating all employees with dignity and respect, as well as the importance of maintaining journalistic integrity in our reporting. Only in this way can we build a more just and equitable society in which all voices are heard and all people are valued. The International Criminal Court, ICC, issued an arrest warrant on Friday for Russian President Vladimir Putin, making him only the third sitting president to face such a warrant. The charges stem from alleged war crimes committed during Russia's invasion of Ukraine, specifically the illegal deportation of Ukrainian children into Russia. The ICC charged Putin with a serious crime against humanity and issued an arrest warrant for Maria Lvovabalova, Russia's Commissioner for Children's Rights. A recent Yale research project identified 6,000 Ukrainian children held in Russia or Russia controlled areas of Ukraine since the invasion. While the move is mostly symbolic, it has significant ramifications. If Putin travels to a country that cooperates with the ICC, he will be arrested. The International Criminal Court cannot try defendants in their absence, and Russia is not about to hand over anyone, let alone Putin. Moscow does not even recognize the International Criminal Court. This makes Putin a pariah, says Stephen Rapp, a former ambassador at large for war crimes under President Obama. He risks arrest if he travels. This will never go away. Russia will face sanctions unless it complies with the warrants. The ICC's decision is the first time the court has issued a warrant against the leader of one of the UN Security Council's five permanent members. So Putin might go to China, Syria, Iran, his few allies, 
but he just won't travel to the rest of the world and won't travel to ICC member states who he believes would actually arrest him, says Adil Ahmad Hack, a Rutgers law professor who specializes in international law. While a trial appears unlikely, the move is significant because it places Putin in rare, if unwelcome, company with Sudan's Omar al-Bashir and Libya's Muammar Gaddafi, both of whom were subject to ICC arrest warrants during their respective presidencies. The ICC's decision will undoubtedly have an impact on Russia's international relations, and it remains to be seen how Putin will respond to the warrant. Boxing has been around for centuries and is one of the most entertaining and exciting sports available. It's also a sport with an intriguing history, full of fascinating characters, dramatic moments, and plenty of controversy. So, let's go back in time and look at the colorful history of boxing. Boxing has its origins in ancient Greece, where it was known as pugilism. In 688 BC, the sport was included in the Olympic Games, and it was a brutal affair. The fights were held without gloves, and the winner was decided by knockout or submission. The sport was so violent that the Roman Empire eventually banned it. Boxing did not resurface in England until the 17th century, when it quickly gained popularity. The sport, however, remained extremely brutal, with fighters wearing no gloves and no rules to protect them. In fact, it was so dangerous that it was prohibited once more in 1743. However, the sport could not be contained and continued to evolve. Boxing rules were established in the late 1800s to make the sport safer. Gloves were introduced to protect the hands and faces of the fighters, and rounds were limited to three minutes to avoid exhaustion. These modifications paved the way for modern boxing. Muhammad Ali, formerly Cassius Clay, is one of history's most recognizable boxers. He was a master of trash talking, and his quick wit and sense of humor made him a fan favorite. Ali won three heavyweight titles, but he was also known for his political activism. He famously refused to be drafted into the Vietnam War, and as a result, he lost his boxing titles. He reclaimed his titles and became a global icon for his talent and bravery. Mike Tyson was another legendary boxer. He first appeared on the scene in the 1980s and quickly became known for his devastating punching power. Tyson was the youngest heavyweight champion in history, having won the title at the age of 20. However, his career was marred by controversy, most notably his infamous ear-biting incident during a fight with Evander Holyfield. Despite his difficulties, Tyson is still regarded as one of the most feared and respected boxers of all time. Boxing has seen a resurgence in popularity in recent years, thanks in part to the rise of social media and the internet. Boxers such as Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pacquiao have become global superstars with millions of people around the world tuning in to watch their fights. These boxers have brought a new level of skill and athleticism to the sport, and they are still pushing the limits of what is possible in the ring. Of course, boxing has had its share of controversies. Fixed fights and corruption plagued the sport in the early 1900s. This resulted in the formation of the National Boxing Association, later renamed the World Boxing Association which established rules and regulations to ensure the sport's fairness and integrity. Boxing is now a highly regulated sport with stringent rules in place to protect fighters and ensure fair play. Fighters are subjected to rigorous physical examinations prior to each fight, and referees and judges are held to high standards of integrity. Despite the rules, the sport retains a level of danger and excitement that keeps fans coming back for more. So there you have it, a quick rundown of boxing history. Boxing has always captivated the public's imagination, from its brutal beginnings to its modern evolution. It's no surprise that boxing remains one of the most exciting and entertaining sports around, with its colorful characters, dramatic moments, and thrilling action. There's never been a better time to enjoy the sweet science of boxing, whether you're a die-hard fan or a casual observer.
leather, oh leather. The stuff that screams, I'm classy, and I know it. There's just something about leather that makes us all feel a little bit cooler, from jackets to shoes to purses. Maybe it's the way it smells, or maybe it's the fact that it's strong and long-lasting. In any case, leather is one of those materials that never goes out of style. Let's talk about the various types of leather available. First up is full-grain leather. This is the best leather money can buy. It's the hide's top layer, and it hasn't been sanded or buffed in any way. This means that it retains all of the animal's natural markings and flaws, giving it a distinct personality. Consider it the leather equivalent of a tough, handsome cowboy. Then there's top grain leather. This is the second best quality leather and is frequently used in high-end leather goods. It has been sanded and buffed to remove any flaws, giving it a smoother and more uniform appearance than full-grain leather. It's like full-grain leather's more refined and refined cousin. Then there's split leather, which is made from the hide's lower layers. Although it is not as durable as full-grain or top-grain leather, it is still of good quality and is commonly used in lower-end leather goods. It's the less experienced younger sibling of full-grain and top-grain leather. Bonded leather is the final option. This is the lowest quality leather available and is commonly used in furniture and other low-cost leather goods. It's made by grinding up leftover scraps of leather into a pulp and then gluing them back together. It's like the leather family's black sheep. But enough about the technicalities, let's get to the heart of why we adore leather. To begin with, it's just plain sexy. Something about someone dressed in a leather jacket or boots screams badass. Maybe it's because leather is often associated with motorcycles and rebellion, or maybe it's simply the way it hugs the body. Whatever it is, leather exudes sexiness. Another reason we adore leather is its versatility. You can wear it with almost anything and look great. For a more casual look, wear a leather jacket with jeans and a t-shirt, or a leather skirt with a blouse. Not to mention leather accessories like belts and purses. They add a sophisticated touch to any outfit. The best thing about leather, however, is that it lasts forever. Unlike cheaper materials, which wear out after a few uses, leather only improves with age. It develops a patina over time, giving it a beautiful, lived-in appearance. It's also extremely tough and can withstand almost anything you throw at it, or on it, for that matter. To summarize, leather is simply amazing. It's seductive, versatile, and long-lasting. There's a type of leather out there for everyone, whether you're a rugged cowboy or a suave businessman. So, the next time you're in the market for a new jacket or boots, think about investing in some high-quality leather. Your wardrobe will be grateful. Soccer, or football as most people call it, is a sport that has captivated millions of people for over a century. Soccer originated in ancient civilizations such as China, Greece, and Rome, where people kicked a ball made of animal bladders or stuffed leather. The modern game of soccer, on the other hand, originated in England in the mid-19th century, where it quickly became a popular pastime among the working class. The Football Association, FA, was founded in England in 1863 to establish a set of rules for the game which included the use of a spherical ball and the prohibition of using hands during play. Soccer's popularity quickly spread throughout Europe, and by the early 20th century, it had become the world's most popular sport. The first international soccer match, between Scotland and England, was played in 1872, and the first international soccer tournament, the British Home Championship, was held in 1884. Soccer has evolved and grown in popularity over the years, with the formation of various leagues and tournaments around the world. The FIFA World Cup, the most prestigious tournament, was first held in 1930 and has since become one of the most watched sporting events on the planet. Soccer, despite its global popularity, has not been without controversy. The introduction of the Video Assistant Referee VR, system was one of the most contentious issues in soccer history. 
While some fans argue that VR has improved the accuracy of refereeing decisions, others believe it has slowed down the game and diminished the excitement of live play. Another source of contention in soccer in recent years has been racism. Many games have been marred by racist chants and gestures, and players have faced abuse both on and off the field. As a result, many soccer organizations have taken anti-racism measures, such as fining clubs and barring fans who engage in discriminatory behavior. Soccer has also been chastised in some quarters for being a low-scoring sport. While fans of other sports, such as American football, frequently level this criticism, it is important to remember that soccer is all about strategy and tactics. A single goal can often make or break a game, and the thrill of a well-executed play can be just as thrilling as a high-scoring match. Pelé is one of the most famous soccer players in history. The Brazilian striker is widely regarded as one of the greatest players of all time, having won three World Cups and scoring more than 1,000 goals throughout his career. Other legends include Diego Maradona, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Zinedine Zidane, all of whom have left their imprint on the game with their skill, talent, and passion. There are several teams that have achieved great success and earned a place in soccer history. Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United, Liverpool, and Bayern Munich are just a few of the teams that have won multiple international titles while dominating their respective leagues. El Clásico, or rivalry between Real Madrid and Barcelona, is one of the most fiercely contested in the world of soccer, with fans tuning in from all over the world to watch the two Spanish giants battle it out on the field. There have been far too many memorable moments in soccer history to count. Some of the most memorable goals in World Cup history include Diego Maradona's Hand of God goal in 1986. Zinedine Zidane's headbutt in the 2006 World Cup final, and Lionel Messi's incredible solo goal against Hatafe in 2007. Other memorable moments include the miracle of Istanbul, in which Liverpool came back from 3-0 down to win the 2005 Champions League final, and the 1970 World Cup final, in which Brazil defeated Italy in a thrilling match that is still regarded as one of the best in soccer history. Soccer has continued to evolve and adapt to new challenges and opportunities in recent years. New technologies like goal line technology and player tracking systems have helped to improve the game's accuracy and fairness, while social media and streaming platforms have made it easier than ever for fans to follow their favorite teams and players. Last week, the news of Silicon Valley Bank's failure shook the U.S. banking system. The bank, which had been considered a safe bet for depositors, could not meet its deposit obligations, leading to a bank run. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, which insures deposits up to $250,000, stepped in to secure the depositors' funds, but the majority of the bank's customers had billions of dollars in deposits. The government eventually had to intervene to restore confidence in the banking system. The Collapse of Silicon Valley Bank The fall of Silicon Valley Bank was due to its investments in various projects that did not generate enough returns to cover its obligations. The bank had overleveraged itself, taking on too much debt, and investing the money in risky ventures. When these ventures failed, the bank could not meet its deposit obligations. This created a panic among depositors, who feared that they would lose their money. The FDIC typically steps in when a bank fails, but in Silicon Valley Bank's case, the agency could only insure deposits up to $250,000. The vast majority of the bank's customers had more than that amount, leaving them vulnerable. The government had to intervene to restore confidence in the banking system and reassure depositors that their money was safe. The Collapse of Signature Bank Shortly after the fall of Silicon Valley Bank, regulators closed New York-based Signature Bank, citing systemic risk. Experts have warned that similar banking failures could occur as many corporations have over-leveraged themselves in dollar debt. This means that they have taken on too much debt denominated in dollars, making them vulnerable to currency fluctuations and economic shocks. The Contagion Effect the fallout from Silicon Valley Bank's collapse was not limited to the U.S. 
European banks lost $100 billion in value in a week after the news broke. Despite tough regulations that should make a similar banking failure in Europe unlikely, the contagion effect is accelerating. The European Central Bank, ECB, has taken steps to prevent a banking crisis, including setting up a banking union and stress-testing banks. The banking union allows for the centralized supervision of banks and a common deposit insurance scheme, which protects depositors across the eurozone. The stress tests assess the bank's ability to weather different economic scenarios and identify potential weaknesses. The Future of the U.S. Banking System The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank has raised concerns about the stability of the U.S. banking system. However, U.S. President Joe Biden has reassured the public that the banking system is safe. The government's intervention to secure depositors' funds has restored confidence in the system, and the FDIC's insurance program has protected depositors from losses. However, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank serves as a reminder that banking failures can happen, even in the most developed economies. It is essential for regulators to monitor banks' activities and ensure that they are not taking on too much risk. This can be done through stress testing and regulatory oversight. Conclusion The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank has highlighted the risks that banks face when they overleverage themselves and invest in risky ventures. The government's intervention to secure depositors' funds has restored confidence in the U.S. banking system, but concerns remain about the contagion effect and the stability of the system. Regulators must continue to monitor banks' activities and ensure that they are not taking on too much risk. The future of the U.S. banking system depends on it. Art has always served as a platform for social and political commentary, and Chinese dissident artist Ai Weiwei is no stranger to using his work to draw attention to important issues. Middle Finger, his most recent project, is a bold and unapologetic statement on the power of individual expression in the digital age. Middle Finger's concept is straightforward but effective, anyone can enter an address into the program, and AI's iconic left hand will appear over that location, Middle Finger extended in defiance. The project's goal is to remind people of the power of their own bodies, particularly their middle fingers. According to AI, we frequently forget that we have a middle finger, or if we do remember, we misuse it. I believe it is important to remember that this part of your body can point to something, an institution or someone who resembles a power, to inform them, and yourself, that you exist. While virtual middle finger tourism may appear to be a minor issue at first glance, it actually addresses a much larger issue, the power of individual expression in a world dominated by technology and social media. It's easy to lose sight of our own agency in our increasingly digital lives, and to believe that our voices are being drowned out by the noise of the internet. AI reminds us that we still have the power to make ourselves heard by creating a platform that allows people to assert themselves in a tangible way. Of course, some may argue that projects like Middle Finger are nothing more than cheap gimmicks, a way for artists to court controversy and garner attention without saying anything meaningful. To dismiss AI's work as mere provocation, however, is to completely miss the point. Yes, the project is intended to be provocative. It is intended to shake us out of our slumber, to force us to confront our own apathy, and to remind us that art can still be a powerful tool for social change. Furthermore, Middle Finger is a comment on the nature of power itself, not just a statement about the power of individual expression. In a world where institutions and governments wield increasing power over our lives, extending one's middle finger can be interpreted as a form of resistance. It's a polite way of saying, I see you, and I refuse to be intimidated. AI empowers us to take a stand against the forces that seek to silence us by allowing people to virtually turn off any location they choose. Of course, some may argue that Middle Finger is just another example of AI's ongoing feud with the Chinese government, a way for him to snub authorities without fear of repercussions. 
While it's true that AI has had his share of run-ins with the Chinese government, he was famously detained for 81 days in 2011, it's also true that his work transcends national boundaries. Middle finger is a universal statement about the power of individual expression in the face of oppression, not just a commentary on Chinese politics. To summarize, virtual middle finger tourism may appear to be a frivolous concept at first glance, but dig deeper and you'll discover that AI Weiwei's latest project is anything but. Middle finger is a powerful reminder that, even in a world dominated by technology and social media, we still have the ability to make our voices heard in a tangible way. It serves as a reminder to never underestimate our own power, and to always be vigilant in the face of oppression. While some may dismiss AI's work as mere provocation, the truth is that Middle Finger is a timely and thought-provoking statement on the nature of power and individual expression in the digital age. As urbanization continues to rise, more people are opting for small space living in micro-apartments. These tiny apartments offer affordable housing solutions for singles, couples, and students who are looking to live in the heart of the city. In this article, we'll explore some design ideas and space-saving solutions for making the most out of your micro-apartment. Micro-apartment design ideas Designing a micro-apartment can be challenging but with a few tips and tricks, you can create a stylish and functional living space. Here are some design ideas to get you started. Embrace minimalism. When it comes to designing a micro-apartment, less is more. Embrace minimalism and stick to the essentials. Choose furniture that serves multiple purposes, like a sofa bed or a coffee table with storage compartments. Opt for neutral colors and natural light to make your space feel open and airy. Go vertical. When you're dealing with limited floor space, it's essential to think vertically. Invest in tall bookshelves and storage cabinets that go all the way up to the ceiling. You can also hang shelves and hooks on the walls to keep your belongings off the floor. Divide and conquer. Divide your micro-apartment into different zones for sleeping, working, and relaxing. Use curtains, screens, or bookcases to create separate areas without closing off the entire space. This way, you can enjoy privacy when you need it and an open floor plan when you don't. Small Space Living Solutions Living in a micro-apartment doesn't mean sacrificing comfort and style. With these small space living solutions, you can create a cozy and inviting home. Multifunctional Furniture one of the biggest challenges of living in a micro-apartment is finding furniture that fits and serves multiple purposes. Look for furniture pieces that can transform into something else, like a desk that turns into a dining table or a bed that folds up into a wall. Not only will you save space, but you'll also save money on buying separate pieces of furniture. Utilize every inch of space. In a micro-apartment, every inch of space counts. Use the area under your bed for storage containers, install shelves above your kitchen cabinets, and add hooks to the back of doors. Get creative with your storage solutions and make use of every neck and cranny. Keep it light and bright. A bright and airy micro-apartment can make a big difference in how spacious it feels. Install mirrors to reflect natural light, choose light-colored furniture and decor, and add lighting fixtures to brighten up dark corners. A well-lit space can create the illusion of more room and will make you feel happier and more productive. Affordable micro-apartments Micro-apartments are becoming increasingly popular due to their affordability. Here are some tips on how to find an affordable micro-apartment. Research your location. Research the neighborhood you want to live in and look for micro-apartment buildings that fit your budget. Consider the location's accessibility to public transportation, grocery stores, and other amenities. Compare prices. Compare prices of different micro-apartment buildings to find the one that offers the best value for your money. Don't forget to factor in additional costs like utilities, parking, and maintenance fees. Consider roommates. Consider living with roommates to split the cost of rent and utilities. 
This is a great option for students and young professionals who are looking to save money while living in a prime location. Conclusion Micro-apartments offer a unique and affordable housing solution for those who value location and convenience over space. By following these design ideas and space-saving solutions, you can maximize your micro-apartment's potential and create a comfortable and stylish living space. Our homes are becoming smarter, more connected, and more automated than ever before as technology advances at an unprecedented rate. Homeowners now have access to a wide range of cutting-edge tools designed to make their lives easier and more convenient, from voice-activated assistants to smart thermostats. Artificial intelligence, A, which is increasingly being integrated into the design of modern homes, is one of the driving forces behind this trend. AI-powered devices can learn from user behavior and adjust accordingly making household tasks and routines easier to manage than ever before. A smart thermostat, for example, can learn your preferred temperature settings over time and automatically adjust the temperature without any user input. Similarly, a smart lighting system can be programmed to turn on and off based on your location or schedule, making it simple to save energy and lower your electricity bills. Automation is another important trend in the world of smart homes. Homeowners can free up more time for other activities by automating various tasks around the house. A robotic vacuum cleaner, for example, can clean floors automatically, saving you the time and effort of doing it yourself. In addition to these practical advantages, smart homes offer new opportunities for entertainment and leisure. Homeowners can create immersive and engaging entertainment experiences in their own living rooms using advanced audio systems and virtual reality VR, headsets. The rise of smart homes has also resulted in increased demand for connected devices and appliances. From security cameras and door locks to coffee makers and refrigerators, virtually every aspect of a home can now be monitored and controlled remotely. The smart TV, which allows users to stream their favorite shows and movies directly from the internet, is one of the most popular examples of this trend. Smart TVs, with built-in apps and voice command support, have become a mainstay in many modern living rooms. However, as with any new technology, there are some concerns about smart homes' impact on privacy and security. With so much data collected and transmitted by smart devices, there is a risk that this information will be misused. To address these concerns, manufacturers and regulators are collaborating to create new smart home standards and guidelines. For example, the European Union recently enacted the General Data Protection Regulation GDPR, which establishes strict guidelines for how businesses collect and use personal information. Similarly, the Federal Trade Commission of the United States has issued guidelines for the development of IoT, Internet of Things, devices that emphasize the importance of security and privacy. Manufacturers can help ensure that their products are safe and secure for consumers to use by following these guidelines and implementing strong safeguards. Looking forward, it is clear that the trend towards smarter homes will only accelerate. As artificial intelligence and automation advance, homeowners will have access to even more powerful tools and features designed to improve their quality of life. For example, we may see the rise of fully autonomous homes, in which intelligent systems manage virtually every aspect of daily life. Whether it's cooking, cleaning, or managing finances, these future homes may be able to handle everything automatically, freeing up more time for the things that truly matter. Of course, there are still many obstacles to overcome before we get there. As with all emerging technologies, there will be setbacks along the way, so smart home development should be approached with caution and care. Nonetheless, the potential benefits of smart homes are too great to overlook. We can create living spaces that are more efficient, comfortable, and enjoyable than ever before by leveraging the power of AI and automation. 
Whether you want to upgrade your current home or build a new one from the ground up, the future of smart homes is bright. By embracing this exciting new trend, we can create a world in which our living spaces interact with us to create the ideal environment for our needs and desires. Learn the proper use of apostrophes and avoid common grammar mistakes. Improve your writing's clarity and professionalism with our helpful tips. One of the most commonly misused and misunderstood grammar points is the apostrophe. Many people struggle with knowing when to use an apostrophe and when to omit it, leading to errors that can make writing appear unprofessional or careless. In this article, we will explore some of the most common mistakes made with apostrophes and offer tips on how to avoid them. Firstly, one of the most basic rules regarding apostrophes is that they are used to indicate possession. For example, the dog's bone indicates that the bone belongs to the dog. However, many people mistakenly add an apostrophe to the word its when indicating possession, as in the dog licked its paw. This is incorrect, as its is a contraction of it is rather than a possessive form. The correct usage would be the dog licked its paw. Another common mistake is the misuse of apostrophes in plural nouns. Apostrophes are not used to make nouns plural, so writing something like I have three apples would be incorrect. The correct form would be I have three apples. Similarly, when referring to decades or years, there is no need for an apostrophe before the S, as in the 1990s were a great time for music, not the 1990s were a great time for music. Apostrophes are also often used incorrectly with pronouns. For example, it's raining outside uses an apostrophe correctly because it's is a contraction of it is. However, the book is theirs does not require an apostrophe, as theirs is already a possessive pronoun. Using an apostrophe in this case would result in the book is theirs, which is incorrect. Finally, it is important to note that apostrophes should never be used to create plurals of proper nouns or abbreviations. For example, I went to the Smith's house is incorrect, as it implies that there is only one person named Smith. Instead, it should be written as I went to the Smith's house if referring to multiple people with the last name Smith. Similarly, I bought two DVDs is improper, the correct form would be I bought two DVDs. In conclusion, the apostrophe is a powerful tool in the English language when used correctly, but it can also cause confusion when misused. By following the guidelines outlined in this article and seeking out additional resources on the topic, writers can improve their understanding of this crucial grammar point and avoid making common mistakes that can detract from the clarity and professionalism of their writing. In the midst of growing concerns about a global financial crisis, the stock market has remained surprisingly resilient. Despite several major banks experiencing severe financial instability in recent weeks, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has registered gains of 132 points in today's trading session. The current climate is marked by rising inflationary pressures, an uncertain global economic outlook, and ongoing geopolitical tensions all of which can impact investor sentiment and market confidence. Nonetheless, the stock market continues to demonstrate robustness, largely thanks to positive domestic and international indicators such as low unemployment rates and steady GDP growth. As always, it is important for investors to remember that not all stocks are performing equally well in this environment. While energy companies like ExxonMobil and Chevron have experienced gains, Tech giants like Apple and Amazon have both seen declines in their share prices. One possible factor contributing to this divergence is the increasing regulatory scrutiny faced by tech companies, with many governments worldwide looking to curb the power and influence of big tech firms. Whether or not these concerns ultimately prove justified, they have certainly contributed to a more cautious approach from investors when it comes to tech stocks. 
Another issue facing investors in this current climate is the ongoing debate surrounding inflation. With prices on the rise across many sectors, there are concerns that central banks may be forced to adopt more hawkish monetary policies in order to prevent inflation from spiraling out of control. This could lead to higher interest rates, which in turn could put pressure on equity valuations. Despite these challenges, however, there are reasons to remain optimistic about the stock market's prospects in the medium to long term. For one thing, there is still ample liquidity in the system with many investors flush with cash that they are eager to put to work in the market. Moreover, recent trends suggest that investors are increasingly gravitating towards sectors that are seen as more resistant to a potential downturn. These include areas such as healthcare, consumer staples, and utilities, which are generally viewed as more defensive plays in times of economic uncertainty. Of course, no investment strategy is foolproof and there are always risks to be aware of. For example, geopolitical tensions between major powers such as the US and China or Russia and the EU could escalate rapidly, causing a sudden shift in investor sentiment that could reverberate across the stock market. Nonetheless, the current economic climate offers plenty of opportunities for investors who are willing to exercise prudence and caution. By diversifying their portfolios and avoiding overexposure to any single sector or asset class, investors can help safeguard against potential losses while also positioning themselves to take advantage of emerging trends and growth opportunities. Ultimately, the key to successful investing in this environment will be maintaining a long-term perspective and focusing on the fundamentals. By staying informed about the latest economic trends and developments, Investors can position themselves to make informed decisions that will help them weather any potential storms and emerge stronger in the years ahead. Do you remember your third birthday party or the time you went to the beach with your family when you were four? Chances are, those memories have faded away into a distant blur, and that's completely normal. In fact, scientists have a term for this phenomenon, childhood amnesia. Childhood amnesia refers to the inability to recall memories from early childhood, typically from birth to around three years old. But have you ever wondered when childhood amnesia starts and why it happens? Well, researchers Patricia J. Bauer and Marina Larkina did too, and their study provides some interesting insights into this curious aspect of memory. The study investigated how childhood amnesia relates to maternal narrative style, which refers to the way mothers talk to their children and tell them stories about their lives. The researchers studied children and their mothers who discussed unique events when the children were three years old. The children were then tested for recall of these events at different ages, ranging from five to nine years old. What the researchers found was fascinating. Children aged 5, 6, and 7 remembered 60% or more of the early life events, while children aged 8 and 9 remembered fewer than 40% of them. This suggests that childhood amnesia starts around the age of 8 and becomes more prevalent as children get older. Maternal narrative style also played a role in the study. The researchers found that maternal deflections of the conversational turn to the child predicted the amount of information children later reported about the early life events. This means that the more mothers allowed their children to take the lead in the conversation, the more likely the children were to remember details of the events. But what does this all mean? Well, the findings have implications for our understanding of childhood amnesia and the achievement of an adult-like distribution of memories in the school years. They highlight the importance of forgetting processes and explanations of childhood amnesia. So, why does childhood amnesia happen in the first place? There isn't a clear answer yet, but some theories suggest that it may be due to the rapid growth and changes in the brain during early childhood. As children's brains develop, they may prune away or modify some of the connections between neurons that underlie memory, resulting in forgotten memories. Overall, childhood amnesia is a natural part of growing up, and this study sheds some light on when and how it occurs. So, the next time you can't remember something from your early childhood, don't worry, it's just your brain doing its thing. And if you're a parent, 
Maybe try letting your child take the lead in conversations about their early memories, who knows, it might help them remember more. In a new study published in the journal Science, researchers have uncovered how sunflowers track the movement of the sun throughout the day. While it has long been known that sunflowers face east in the morning and follow the sun as it moves westward during the day, the underlying mechanism has remained a mystery until now. The research team, led by Dr. Helianthus, found that sunflowers use a biological clock located in their stems to regulate the growth rate of their stems, allowing them to turn their heads toward the sun as it moves across the sky. The clock, which operates in a similar way to the one that governs the sleep-wake cycle in humans, uses the plant hormone auxin to trigger growth in the stem on one side while inhibiting growth on the other side. The researchers also discovered that sunflowers adjust the timing of their stem growth based on the length of the day. In the early morning, when the sun is rising, the stem on the east side of the plant grows faster than the stem on the west side, causing the sunflower to turn its head to face east. As the day progresses, the sunflower slows down the growth rate of the east-facing stem while promoting growth on the west-facing side, which causes the flower head to turn toward the west. Sunflowers are not the only plants that track the sun in this way. Other plants, such as soybeans and corn, also have a similar mechanism for following the sun. However, the study of sunflowers sheds new light on the molecular and cellular processes that underlie this behavior. Understanding how sunflowers track the sun could have implications for agriculture, as it may be possible to breed crops that are better able to optimize their growth by following the sun. Additionally, the research may help inform the development of new solar tracking technologies, which could improve the efficiency of solar panels by allowing them to follow the sun across the sky. In conclusion, this new study sheds light on how sunflowers are able to track the sun and adjust their growth patterns accordingly. By using their biological clock to regulate stem growth, sunflowers are able to optimize their growth for maximum exposure to sunlight. This research could have implications for agriculture and solar energy, and highlights the fascinating complexity of the natural world. When it comes to making purchases, it can be tempting to always go for the newest, shiniest thing on the market. However, this approach can have negative consequences for both our wallets and the planet. That's why the concept of, something old, something new, something used, has gained popularity in recent years. By balancing our purchases between these three categories, we can save money, reduce waste, and support a more sustainable lifestyle. Something old. Vintage is the new buzzword in fashion and decor, and for good reason. Purchasing vintage or second-hand items not only saves money but also reduces the environmental impact of manufacturing new products. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, textile waste accounts for nearly 5% of all landfill space. By choosing to buy second-hand clothing and accessories, we can divert these items from the landfill and give them a new life. Additionally, purchasing vintage or antique furniture, art, and other home decor items can add character and charm to our living spaces while reducing our carbon footprint. Something new. While it's important to reduce waste by purchasing used items, there are times when buying new is necessary. For example, certain safety items like car seats and helmets should always be purchased new to ensure they meet current safety standards. Additionally, supporting sustainable companies that prioritize eco-friendly materials and production processes can help drive positive change in the marketplace. When making new purchases, look for brands that use recycled materials, organic cotton, or other sustainable materials. By voting with our wallets, we can encourage companies to adopt more sustainable practices. Something used. In addition to buying second-hand items, there are other ways to incorporate something used into our daily lives. For example, using reusable containers and bags instead of disposable ones can significantly reduce waste. Similarly, shopping at thrift stores or consignment shops for clothing, books, and household items is a great way to save money and reduce our impact on the environment.
And when it comes to electronics, consider purchasing refurbished items rather than buying new. Refurbished products are often just as good as new and come with a lower price tag and reduced environmental impact. Balancing our purchases between something old, something new, and something used can be a fun and creative way to live a more sustainable lifestyle. By supporting vintage and second-hand markets, choosing sustainable brands, and reducing waste through reusable containers and bags, we can save money and reduce our impact on the environment. So the next time you're tempted to splurge on something new, consider how you can balance your purchases and support a more sustainable future. Stocks tumbled on Wall Street on Friday as investors reacted to news of the biggest U.S. bank failure in nearly 15 years and concerns about rising interest rates. The S&P 500 fell 1.4%, marking its worst week since September. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 345 points, or 1.1%, while the Nasdaq Composite sank 1.8%. Some of the sharpest drops came from the financial industry, with banking stocks hit particularly hard. Regulators took over Silicon Valley Bank in a surprise midday move after shares of its parent company, SVB Financial, plummeted more than 60% this week. The company, which served the startup industry, was trying to raise cash to relieve a crunch. Analysts have said it was in a relatively unique situation but it has led to concerns a broader banking crisis could erupt. The market's response came amid what strategists in a B of A global research report called the crashy vibes of March. Markets have been nervous about high inflation, which could force the Federal Reserve to re-accelerate its hikes to interest rates. The yield on the 10-year Treasury fell sharply from 3.91% to 3.69%, helping to set rates for mortgages and other important loans. Some of the sharpest drops on Wall Street came from banking stocks, with worries about who else may suffer a cash crunch if interest rates stay higher for longer and customers pull out deposits. This could force banks to sell bonds to raise cash, right as higher interest rates knock down prices for those bonds. Besides SVB financial struggles, Silvergate Capital said this week it's voluntarily shutting down its bank. It served the crypto industry and had warned it could end up less than well capitalized. Stock losses were heaviest at regional banks. First Republic Bank tumbled 14.8%, but filed a statement with regulators to reiterate its strong capital and liquidity positions. Charles Schwab lost another 11.7% after dropping 12.8% on Thursday, as investors stretched for read-throughs from the SVB crisis, according to analysts at UBS. The analysts called them logical but superficial because of differences in how companies get their deposits. Larger banks, which have been stress-tested by regulators following the 2008 financial crisis, held up better. J.P. Morgan Chase rose 2.5%. All told, the S&P 500 fell 56.73 points to 3,861.59. The Dow lost 345.22 to 31,909.64, and the Nasdaq dropped 199.47 to 11,138.89. Investors are closely watching the situation to see how it develops in the coming weeks. Some experts believe that the market is simply going through a correction, with stocks having been overvalued for some time. Others worry that the problems in the financial industry could lead to a broader economic downturn. It's important to remember that the stock market is inherently unpredictable and subject to fluctuations based on a wide range of factors. While Friday's tumble was significant, it's important not to overreact or make hasty decisions based on short-term market movements. Instead, investors should take a long-term approach to investing and focus on building a diversified portfolio that can weather market volatility. In conclusion, the recent stock market tumble on Wall Street has been driven by concerns about rising interest rates and the fallout from the biggest U.S. bank failure in nearly 15 years. 
While the market's response has been significant, it's important to remain calm and focused on long-term investment strategies. As always, investing carries risk, and it's important to consult with a financial advisor before making any major investment decisions. Researchers have mapped the connectum of an entire insect brain, specifically a drosophila larva, to better understand the brain's function. The team, led by Michael Winding, found that multisensory and interhemispheric integration were pervasive, meaning that the insect brain was able to combine information from multiple sources and use both hemispheres of the brain to process it. The architecture was highly recurrent, with abundant feedback from descending neurons, and multiple novel circuit motifs were identified. Interestingly, some of the structural features resembled state-of-the-art deep learning architectures, including multilayer shortcuts and nested recurrent loops. The study of the insect brain is fascinating because, despite its small size, it is able to perform complex tasks such as learning, value computation, and action selection. The connectum provides a detailed map of the neural circuits that make these functions possible. The researchers characterized different types of neurons, hubs, and feed-forward and feedback pathways, as well as interactions between the brain and nerve cord. The most recurrent circuits in the brain comprise the input and output neurons of the learning center. This means that these circuits are likely responsible for the insect's ability to learn from its environment and make decisions based on that information. The identified brain architecture provides a basis for future experimental and theoretical studies of neural circuits, which could have implications for developing better machine learning algorithms or treatments for neurological disorders. The study also sheds light on the similarities between insect brains and deep learning architectures. This could have implications for the development of artificial intelligence, as researchers may be able to apply what they learn from insect brains to create more efficient and effective machine learning algorithms. In conclusion, the mapping of the connectum of an entire insect brain is a significant step forward in understanding the function of neural circuits. The researchers identified novel circuit motifs and characterized different types of neurons and pathways. The results of the study could have implications for both machine learning and treatments for neurological disorders. On this day in 1879, one of the most influential scientists of all time, Albert Einstein, was born in Ulm, Germany. He is known for his groundbreaking work in theoretical physics, particularly his theory of relativity, which fundamentally changed the way we understand space, time, and gravity. Einstein was a curious child, often questioning the world around him. He was also a gifted student, but struggled with traditional education methods. At age 16, he moved to Switzerland and eventually studied at the Federal Polytechnic School in Zurich. After graduation, he worked as a patent clerk, where he had plenty of time to pursue his own scientific research. It was during this time that Einstein began to develop his revolutionary ideas about the nature of the universe. In 1905, he published three papers that would shake the foundations of physics. The first introduced the concept of photons and the idea that light can be both a particle and a wave. The second was on Brownian motion, the random movement of small particles in a fluid. The third was on the special theory of relativity, which showed that the laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers, and that the speed of light is constant regardless of the observer's motion. Einstein's work on relativity became particularly important in the years that followed, as it helped explain phenomena like the bending of starlight by gravity and the fact that time appears to move more slowly for objects in motion. 
In 1915, Einstein published his general theory of relativity, which expanded on the earlier work and showed that gravity is the curvature of space-time caused by the presence of mass and energy. Throughout his life, Einstein continued to work on physics and became an important figure in the scientific community. However, he was also known for his sense of humor and his love of music. He played the violin and often said that if he hadn't become a scientist, he would have become a musician. Einstein passed away in 1955 at the age of 76, but his contributions to science continue to shape our understanding of the world. His theories have been tested and verified countless times and have led to important discoveries like black holes and gravitational waves. Despite his immense contributions to science, Einstein remained humble and had a sense of humor about himself and his work. He once said, I have no special talent, I am only passionately curious. It is this passion for learning and understanding that made him one of the greatest minds of all time. So, on this day in history, we celebrate the birth of Albert Einstein and the incredible impact he had on the world of science and beyond. On this day, March 6, in the year 1836, a historic event took place in the small town of Nacogdoches, Texas. The event in question was the opening of the first lending library in Texas. It may not seem like a big deal now, but at the time, it was quite an important and exciting moment for the residents of Nacogdoches. The library was founded by Henry Raggett, a wealthy businessman who had recently relocated to Nacogdoches from New Orleans. Raggett was a man of many interests, and one of his greatest passions was reading. He had a sizable personal library, and he often loaned out his books to friends and acquaintances. But he noticed that there was no public library in Nacogdoches, and he believed that the town would benefit greatly from having one. Ragged approached the town council with his proposal, and after some initial hesitation, they agreed to let him open a lending library. Ragged donated his own books to start the library's collection, and he also solicited donations from other book lovers in the community. Within a few weeks, the library had over 100 books in its collection, ranging from classics like Shakespeare and Cervantes to more contemporary works like the novels of Sir Walter Scott. The library quickly became a hub of activity in Nacogdoches. People of all ages and backgrounds came to borrow books, discuss literature, and attend lectures and other cultural events. It was especially popular among young people, who saw the library as a way to broaden their horizons and learn about the wider world beyond Nacogdoches. One of the most memorable events in the library's early years was the arrival of a traveling Shakespearean actor named John Wilkins. Wilkins was a tall, flamboyant man with a booming voice and a penchant for over-the-top theatricality. He arrived in Nacogdoches in the summer of 1838, and he immediately made a name for himself by putting on a series of performances of Shakespeare's plays. Wilkins quickly became a fixture at the library, where he would hold court in the reading room, regaling patrons with stories of his adventures on the stage. He also gave lectures on Shakespeare and the art of acting, which were attended by large crowds of eager listeners. But Wilkins was not content to simply talk about Shakespeare, he wanted to perform it. And so, in the fall of 1838, he organized a production of Hamlet that was to be performed in the library's main reading room. The production was a smashing success. The room was packed with people, many of whom had never seen a play before. Wilkins played Hamlet himself, and he was a revelation, his booming voice and theatrical gestures brought the character to life in a way that few had ever seen before. The library was transformed into a makeshift theater, with chairs and benches arranged in rows to accommodate the audience. There were no special effects or elaborate costumes, but the power of Shakespeare's language and Wilkins' performance carried the day. The library continued to thrive in the years that followed, and it remained a vital part of the Nacogdoches community for many decades. Today, it is remembered as a testament to the power of books and culture to bring people together, 
and as a reminder that even the smallest towns can be home to great ideas and great achievements. Have you ever caught yourself yawning in response to someone else's yawn, even when you're not tired? Yawning is a universal phenomenon, and scientists have been studying it for decades, yet many aspects of it remain a mystery. In recent years, research has revealed some fascinating insights into the science behind yawning and its social implications. Yawning is a reflexive act that involves inhaling deeply and exhaling audibly. It's often associated with tiredness or boredom, but people also yawn in response to stress, anxiety, and other emotions. Despite its widespread occurrence, the exact purpose of yawning is still not entirely clear. One theory suggests that yawning helps to regulate brain temperature. When we're tired or bored, our brain activity slows down, and yawning increases blood flow to the brain, cooling it down and increasing its oxygen supply. This theory is supported by studies showing that people yawn less frequently in cool temperatures and more frequently in warmer temperatures. Another theory proposes that yawning helps to synchronize our sleep-wake cycles. When we yawn, we stretch our jaw muscles, which in turn stimulates the trigeminal nerve in our face. This nerve is connected to the part of the brain that controls our circadian rhythms, which regulate our sleep and wakefulness. By yawning, we may be resetting our internal clock and promoting alertness. Yawning also has social implications. It's been observed that yawning is contagious, meaning that when one person yawns, others around them are more likely to yawn as well. This phenomenon is called contagious yawning, and it's been observed in many species, including humans, chimpanzees, and dogs. Contagious yawning is thought to be a form of empathy. When we see someone else yawning, our brains automatically mimic the action, activating the same neural pathways that are involved in actual yawning. This suggests that contagious yawning is a subconscious way of expressing empathy and bonding with others. Interestingly, contagious yawning is not universal. Some people are more susceptible to it than others, and studies have found that it's more common among people who score high on tests of empathy and social awareness. People with autism who often struggle with social interaction are less likely to yawn contagiously. The social implications of yawning extend beyond empathy and bonding. Yawning can also signal boredom, disinterest, or even disrespect. In some cultures, yawning in public is considered rude or offensive, while in others, it's seen as a sign of relaxation and comfort. Understanding these cultural differences can be important for navigating social situations and avoiding misunderstandings. In conclusion, yawning is a fascinating phenomenon that has puzzled scientists and intrigued the public for centuries. While much remains unknown about its exact purpose and mechanisms, recent research has shed light on the role of yawning in regulating brain temperature, synchronizing sleep-wake cycles, and promoting empathy in social bonding. By understanding the science behind yawning and its social implications, we can gain a deeper appreciation for this ubiquitous and intriguing behavior. Lululemon is a fitness brand that has taken the world by storm. Lululemon has made a name for itself in the industry for their high-quality workout clothes and trendy designs. Lululemon's connection to lemons, on the other hand, may be less well-known. In this article, we'll look at the connection between Lululemon, lemons, and love. Let us begin with lemons. These bright, citrusy fruits can be used for more than just flavoring water or baking lemon bars. Lemons are high in antioxidants and vitamin C, and their juice has been used for everything from skin care to cleaning. Plus, lemons just seem cheerful. Their cheerful yellow color brightens up any space. Now for the exciting part, how Lululemon and lemons are related. The first link is in their logos. Lululemon's logo is a stylized backslash a backslash that resembles a lemon. 
Some people even call the logo backslash the lemon logo backslash this connection was not intended, but it is a fun coincidence nonetheless. Another link between Lululemon and lemons is their shared emphasis on healthy living. The mission of Lululemon is to backslash create components for people to live longer, healthier, more enjoyable lives at backslash lemons are an obvious choice for this mission because they are a nutritious and refreshing addition to any diet. For a natural energy boost, lemon juice can also be added to water or tea. What about lava though? What role do lemons play in the world of love and relationships? To begin with, lemons can be a romantic gift. Consider a lovely bouquet of flowers with a few bright yellow lemons tucked in for a splash of color. It's unexpected and playful while still demonstrating that you care. In addition, if you're looking for a fun and healthy date idea, make lemon bars together. Baking brings people together, and lemon bars are a crowd pleaser. We can't talk about lemons without bringing up the lemons law. This law is intended to protect consumers who buy a defective product that is still under warranty, such as a car. If the car continues to have problems after multiple attempts at repair, the consumer is entitled to a refund or replacement under the lemon law. While the lemon law may not be the most romantic link between lemons and love, it is an intriguing one. Finally, consider lemons in water. This is a long-standing trend, but it's worth mentioning again. A few slices of lemon in your water not only adds flavor, but it also has health benefits. Lemon water can help with digestion, your immune system, and even weight loss. It's also an excellent way to stay hydrated throughout the day. Finally, while Lululemon, Lemons, and Love may appear to be an unlikely trio, they actually have a lot in common. All three are concerned with promoting healthy living and bringing happiness into people's lives. So, the next time you sip lemon water after a workout in your Lululemon leggings, remember that you're part of a tart and tangy trio dedicated to living your best life. In recent years, the United States has faced a skilled labor shortage in a variety of industries. Despite the high demand for trade jobs, many Americans are turning down these opportunities. This article will investigate the reasons for this trend as well as its potential consequences. Trade Job Perception Many people believe that trade jobs are low-paying, dirty, and dangerous. This perception may lead them to pursue other more prestigious or secure career paths. This stereotype, however, is far from accurate. Indeed, many trade jobs provide competitive pay, benefits, and advancement opportunities. A skilled plumber or electrician, for example, can earn a six-figure salary with benefits and job security. Specialized knowledge and training are required for these jobs, which can be obtained through vocational schools or apprenticeships. Furthermore, once someone is certified in their trade, they can start their own business or work for larger corporations, increasing their earning potential even further. Lack of skilled training A lack of training opportunities is another reason for the shortage of trade workers. Many schools have cut vocational education programs as the economy has shifted toward a service-based economy. As a result, a generation of young people lacks the skills required to pursue careers in the trades. Technical schools and community colleges may offer trade-specific training programs in some cases. These programs, however, can be expensive, and students may be hesitant to incur debt in order to pursue a career in a field that is often perceived as less prestigious. Cultural Pressure Young people face cultural pressure to attend four-year universities and obtain white-collar jobs. This pressure is frequently applied by parents, teachers, and peers who believe that obtaining a college degree is the only way to achieve success. This makes young people believe that trade jobs are beneath them or that pursuing such a career is a failure. As a result of this cultural pressure, there is a significant disparity in the number of young people pursuing trade jobs. The median age of construction workers is 42 years old, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, with only 9% of workers under the age of 25. This pressure, 
however, can have disastrous consequences for those who incur significant student loan debt to attend college, but then struggle to find work in their field after graduation. Trade jobs, on the other hand, can provide a stable and lucrative career path without the burden of student loans. Finally, economic factors play an important role in the shortage of trade workers. Many construction projects were halted during the 2008 financial crisis, resulting in job losses in the industry. Due to the volatile job market, many workers were forced to leave the trade, and younger generations were discouraged from entering it. Furthermore, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the vulnerability of certain industries, particularly those that rely on skilled workers. For example, a shortage of electricians and plumbers during the pandemic has resulted in construction projects being delayed or canceled, leaving some businesses without the resources they require to operate. Conclusion Despite the numerous advantages of trade jobs, there is a labor shortage in the industry. We can encourage more people to consider trade careers by addressing factors such as perception, training opportunities, cultural pressure, and economic insecurity. This will help to meet the rising demand for skilled labor while also opening up new opportunities for the next generation of workers. Finally, the decision to pursue a career in the trades should be based on personal interests, skills, and financial objectives. While some professions require a college degree, trade jobs provide a viable career path for many Americans who want to earn a good living while working with their hands. It's time to change the way people think about trade jobs and recognize them as valuable and rewarding careers. Artificial Intelligence AI, technology has advanced significantly in recent years, and it is now affecting all aspects of our lives. From self-driving cars to voice assistants like Siri and Alexa, the way we interact with technology is rapidly changing. In this article, we will look at the current state of artificial intelligence, its benefits and challenges, and how businesses can prepare for the future. The Current State of Artificial Intelligence AI is no longer just a science fiction concept, it is becoming more and more integrated into our daily lives. AI algorithms are being used to create new products, services, and solutions in industries as diverse as healthcare, finance, transportation, and entertainment. Machine learning is one area where AI has made significant progress. Machines can now learn from massive amounts of data and improve their performance over time, thanks to advancements in the field. Many of the most recent AI applications, such as predictive analytics, personalized medicine, and autonomous vehicles, rely on this ability. Natural language processing is another area where AI is making an impact, NLP. NLP allows computers to understand and interpret human language, allowing us to communicate with them in a more natural manner. Siri and Alexa, for example, are good examples of this technology in action. The Advantages of AI AI offers numerous advantages to both individuals and businesses. For one thing, it can automate repetitive tasks, allowing employees to focus on more complex and strategic tasks. This increased productivity can save businesses money while also improving job satisfaction and lowering employee burnout. In healthcare, AI is assisting doctors in more accurately diagnosing diseases and providing personalized treatment plans based on patient data. The technology is also being used to develop new drugs and therapies, which could save countless lives. AI-powered fraud detection systems in finance are assisting banks and other financial institutions in preventing financial crimes before they occur. AI is also changing the way we invest by utilizing predictive analytics to identify market trends and make better investment decisions. AI Challenges Despite the numerous advantages of AI, there are several challenges that must be addressed. 
one major source of concern is the potential impact on employment. As machines become more capable of performing tasks previously performed by humans, some jobs may become obsolete. Policymakers must develop policies to assist workers who may be displaced by automation. Another issue to consider is the ethical implications of AI. As machines become more intelligent, there is a risk that they will make harmful decisions or violate human rights. AI algorithms are also susceptible to bias if they are trained on biased datasets. To address these concerns, organizations must ensure that their artificial intelligence AI, systems are transparent, accountable, and adhere to ethical principles. Making plans for the future Businesses must adapt to stay competitive as AI evolves. This entails investing in artificial intelligence technologies and training employees to work alongside machines. Companies should also focus on developing an innovation and experimentation culture in which employees are encouraged to try new things and take calculated risks. Amazon is one example of a company that is embracing AI. The e-commerce behemoth employs artificial intelligence algorithms to personalize product recommendations and optimize its supply chain. Amazon has also created a fleet of delivery drones that use artificial intelligence to navigate and avoid obstacles. Google is another example, as it uses AI to improve the accuracy of its search results and develop new products and services. Google is also investing in AI-powered healthcare solutions that could assist doctors in more accurately diagnosing diseases and providing personalized treatment plans. To summarize, the AI era has begun, and it is changing the way we live, work, and interact with technology. While AI has many advantages, it also has some drawbacks that must be addressed. Businesses can stay ahead of the curve and reap the benefits of this exciting new technology by embracing AI and planning for the future. Water that is safe to drink is critical to our health and well-being. Tap water, on the other hand, may contain harmful contaminants like lead, bacteria, and chlorine. That is why you should invest in a filtration system to ensure the purity of your drinking water. In this article, we'll look at the various types of water filters on the market and how to pick the best one for your needs. Filtered water bottles Filtered water bottles are an excellent choice for those who are constantly on the go or who enjoy outdoor activities such as hiking or camping. Look for a filtered water bottle with a sturdy design that can withstand rough outdoor use. It is also critical to select a bottle with a filter that effectively removes contaminants and is simple to replace when necessary. Drinking water filters there are several types of drinking water filters, including activated carbon, ceramic, and sediment filters. Consider the quality of your tap water as well as the specific contaminants you want to remove when choosing a drinking water filter. For example, if your tap water contains high levels of chlorine, it's best to use a chlorine-removing filter. Reverse osmosis systems are effective at removing minerals, heavy metals, and dissolved solids from tap water. These systems, however, can be costly and require professional installation. It is critical to select a reverse osmosis system with a high-quality membrane capable of effectively removing contaminants and having a long lifespan. Water filtration systems To remove a wide range of contaminants from tap water, water filtration systems typically use multiple stages of filtration. Consider the quality of your tap water, your budget, and the size of your household when selecting a water filtration system. It is critical to select a system with easy-to-replace filters that have a long lifespan. Water purifiers use advanced technology to remove contaminants as well as bacteria and viruses from tap water. Look for water purifiers that have been certified by organizations such as NSF International or the Water Quality Association. It is also critical to select a purifier that has a high-quality UV lamp or chemical treatment system. Alkaline water filters these filters raise the pH of tap water, making it less acidic. When selecting an alkaline water filter, look for one that uses natural materials to raise the pH level, such as coral or tourmaline. It is also critical to select a filter that has a long lifespan and is simple to install. Fluoride removal filters Fluoride removal filters are specifically designed to remove fluoride from drinking water. 
look for fluoride removal filters that use activated alumina or bone char to effectively remove fluoride. It is also critical to select a filter that does not significantly reduce the flow rate of your tap water. Water cooler dispensers, for offices or homes, water cooler dispensers are a convenient option. Consider the size of your household and the frequency of use when selecting a water cooler dispenser. It is critical to select a dispenser with a sufficient reservoir and a dependable heating and cooling system. Types of water cooler dispensers, there are typically two types of water coolers, bottle-fed and bottle-less. Bottle-fed coolers use large plastic bottles that can be refilled or replaced when empty. Bottleless coolers, on the other hand, are directly connected to a water source and filter the water as it passes through the dispenser. Maintenance and cleaning, to ensure proper hygiene, it's important to regularly clean and maintain your water cooler dispenser. This involves cleaning the dispenser's reservoir and sanitizing the components that come into contact with the water. Portable water filters, because they are small and lightweight, portable water filters are ideal for travel or outdoor activities. Consider the type of filter used and the ease of replacement when selecting a portable water filter. It is also critical to select a filter with a high flow rate to ensure immediate access to clean drinking water. Portable water filters typically use one or more filtration methods to remove impurities from water. Some common types of filters include activated carbon, ceramic, and hollow fiber membranes. Each type of filter has its own strengths and weaknesses, so it's important to select the right type of filter for your needs. Countertop water filters are designed to sit on your kitchen counter and connect directly to your faucet. Consider the amount of counter space available as well as the quality of your tap water when selecting a countertop water filter. To ensure a consistent supply of clean drinking water, choose a filter with a long lifespan and a high flow rate. Finally, the best filtration system for your drinking water is determined by your specific needs and preferences. There are numerous options on the market, whether you prefer a portable water bottle or a countertop filter. You can ensure that your drinking water is clean and safe to drink by investing in a high-quality filtration system. TikTok, the video sharing app that has become a global phenomenon, is coming under increased scrutiny due to its ties to China as well as concerns about data privacy and security. As more countries consider or implement TikTok bans, the app's and its millions of users' future is uncertain. The controversy surrounding TikTok stems from the fact that it is owned by ByteDance, a Chinese company subject to Chinese laws and regulations, including those pertaining to national security and censorship. Critics claim that this exposes TikTok to government interference and surveillance as well as that the app collects and shares user data with Chinese authorities without consent or transparency. In response to these concerns, several governments have taken steps to limit or prohibit the use of TikTok within their borders. The United States was the first major country to take such action, citing national security concerns and alleging that TikTok poses a threat to the data and privacy of American users. Former President Donald Trump issued executive orders effectively banning TikTok in the United States, but these were challenged in court and eventually suspended under the new administration. Other countries have expressed reservations about TikTok's security and integrity. The UK government, for example, has prohibited the use of TikTok on official devices, citing security concerns and data protection concerns. Similarly, Belgium and the European Union have imposed restrictions on TikTok in response to concerns that user data may be shared with Chinese authorities. In addition, New Zealand has taken steps to limit the use of TikTok within government agencies. China has strongly condemned these actions, claiming that they are discriminatory and based on false assumptions. Chinese officials have urged other countries to treat Chinese companies fairly and not to bar them from doing business for political, or ideological reasons. Some analysts believe that the TikTok ban is part of a larger trend of rising tensions between China and the West, as well as a reaction to Chinese tech companies' dominance in global markets. A TikTok ban has far-reaching implications for both users and the broader social media landscape. TikTok has become an important part of many young people's social lives and creative expression, particularly in the United States. The app has also served as a platform for the emergence of new voices and perspectives, 
challenging traditional media and entertainment models. A TikTok ban, on the other hand, could have unintended consequences, such as driving users to less secure or regulated platforms or reducing competition and innovation in the social media industry. It may also worsen tensions between China and other countries, resulting in a more fragmented and politicized digital world. It looks like John Garza and Ali Nemo thought they could pull off a prison break like the infamous Andy Dufresne from the Shawshank Redemption. But instead of a rock hammer hidden in a Bible, these two used a toothbrush and a metal object to construct their tools. Talk about Mac driver level skills. The Newport News Sheriff's Office says the duo managed to escape by exploiting a design weakness in the medium security jail. And let's be honest, if there's one thing humans are good at, it's exploiting weaknesses. From hackers infiltrating computer systems to kids figuring out how to sneak cookies before dinner, we're always looking for ways to bend the rules. But back to Garza and Nemo. After tunneling through a cell wall, the pair scaled the containment wall to gain their freedom. It's like they were auditioning for a role in an action movie. The only problem? They ended up at an IHOP. Because when you've just escaped from jail, what's the first thing you want? Pancakes, of course. It didn't take long for authorities to track down the fugitives thanks to some eagle-eyed citizens who spotted them at the pancake house. Maybe Garza and Nemo should have gone to a less crowded spot like Waffle House. Just saying. Now that they're back in custody, the two men will face even more charges. It's like they didn't learn their lesson the first time. Garza was being held on contempt of court and probation violations, while Nemo faced charges including credit card fraud, forgery, and possession of burglary tools. And now they can add? Attempted escape artists to their rap sheets. But let's give credit where credit is due. These guys had some serious determination to break out of jail. It takes a certain level of commitment to dig a tunnel with a toothbrush. And who needs a fancy hammer when you've got a metal object? These guys are the definition of resourceful. Of course, we don't condone breaking out of jail. It's illegal and dangerous. But we can appreciate the creativity that went into this escape attempt. Maybe Garza and Nemo should consider a career change. With their skills, they could be successful engineers or inventors. In the end, it's clear that these two were not menacing individuals, as the Newport News police chief pointed out. They were just two guys trying to break free from the monotony of jail life. But unfortunately for them, their freedom was short-lived. In the words of Andy Dufresne, Get busy living, or get busy dying. And it looks like Garza and Nemo will be doing the latter for a little while longer. <laughs>